Keith Wallahan, Liberal MP, joins me. Keith, a, a former commando yourself, a former uh, member of the Australian Army, how do you react to the tragic death of Jack Fitzgibbon? I know you met the former Defence Minister, Joel Fitzgibbon, Jack's father at some point when you were serving, uh, but this is terrible news. The first time I met Jack's dad, Joel, was at the funeral of a, another commando uh, who had died and he was there in his capacity as defence minister. And that's one of the most sombre things you can do as a parliamentarian, but particularly as defence minister, because you feel a sense of responsibility. And I just saw Joel as, as a person and a loving dad. And to think years later, he's now on the other end of that grief uh, breaks my heart. Uh, his son, Jack, I, I sat in the parliamentary cafe not long ago and Joel was speaking so fondly of his son and how much he was enjoying being in the 2nd Commando Regiment. And he's not just there acting as another member of the team, he's a signaller. And a key part of what makes Special Forces special are the communicators. And they, um, they don't just carry all the normal equipment, they carry really heavy radio and they make sure that you can do all of the things you need to do. And then they're just superstars. And so my heart breaks... Joel Fitzgibbon and his family and the wider Commando Regiment. This is um, a really sad time. Yeah, really, absolutely. And sad at uh, any time when someone in, in uniform loses their life, and, uh, and that's the case here with Jack Fitzgibbon. Our condolences to Joel, absolutely. We share those with you, Keith. Um, let's look at the where we are a bit over, well, not a full, not a week, a few days out from Dunkley by-election. You spoke about the need to, for the Liberal Party to focus on the issue of generational, intergenerational home ownership. Why is that such a, a, an important piece when it comes to the Liberal Party and its political future? I think it's more than just what's important to the Liberal Party's future. It's important to our national future. We're seeing a disconnect between average wages and median house prices to the point that uh, people who aren't in the top brackets of incomes or come from families that own land and can be the bank of mum and dad are really questioning whether home ownership is an aspiration they can look to. Uh, and that's not the sort of Australia we pride ourselves on and that uh, we want to leave to our children. So I think at all levels of government, in all parties, uh, we need to make this a top tier issue. And, and I'm really pleased that Peter Dutton is doing that, as are the team, where we're turning our mind to what we can do at a federal level. And one of the key inputs is migration. It's a supply and demand. The laws of economics still apply. And the disproportionate number of migrants in the last 12 months in particular has put enormous strain on housing, infrastructure, and also the preservation of green space. So, so that is one piece of the puzzle that we will look at as well. Finally, the opposition rolling the dice on, on nuclear. It, it's, uh, it stacks up according to, to many in this space, in the business world. Others say it doesn't. Um, but politically, it is a bit of a risk, isn't it? Again, I don't look at this through a political lens. I, I look at this through the national interest lens. If you take climate change seriously, and I do, well, then nuclear will be part of the mix with renewables. You need it for reliable baseload power. Uh, but, but more than that, that those who say it's too expensive and the private sector won't engage in it, well, then you've got nothing to fear in removing the ban. Remove the ban. Let the market decide. And that's all we're asking for here. It's, it, there's a reason so many of our peers in the G20 have this in the mix. And France is a classic example at 70 percent. I don't see why that shouldn't be an option for Australians. Liberal MP Keith Wallahan, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week.